Hello everybody and welcome to another episode of Too Weird, I Didn't Watch, this is turning into a song at the beginning. We've already done this bit, but can't do it again. I can do singing whenever I want to, cause my name is Albert. Mine's Brantley. And this is the show where we talk about <laughs> movies we haven't seen based on nothing but their weird descriptions. Flawless intro. <laughs> Not gonna do it again. I don't want you to. Cool, cool, cool. Uh, you're going to start us off, Brantley, and then I'm going to take over after you read yours. So go with the description. All right, we have Adventures in Dinosaur City. Um, it's got dinosaur, it's got adventures, it's a city, I assume, run by dinosaurs? There's a and dinosaur we're city. in it. Well, yes, we're having an adventure, but I just want to think about, like, the dinosaur trash pickup, all right? The, the world where it's just dinosaurs, but instead of people. They have, like, a dinosaur city council, you know? So, you know, like, dinosaurs. Yes, I the, guess. The I haven't seen that show. It's fun. They're like, you know. I can loan it to you. I had the full series on DVD. I got it for Christmas. The Triceratops. Like is got, like, have to deal with a lot of racism. Yeah, they don't do that. They just kind of, like, they have some jokes, but just, like, all dinosaurs are one race and just some of them are different. And there's a joke where uh, Earl, he, his wife says something. He goes, I'm the mighty Megalosaurus, king of the dinosaurs. She goes, no, that's the T-Rex. Like, and she goes, no, that's Derek's. That's uh, just the theory. Nope, I dated one in college. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I classy. <laughs> I'm thinking about. Uh, I forgot what I was gonna say there. Stupid. No, I got. I've got a. I've got a thing to say about Dinosaur City, and I will say it. I will think of the thing. Do 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 do. Boom. Da dun 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 do 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 It's no, it's gone. It's gone. The joke is gone. Boom. It was a good joke. Everybody laugh now. Boom boom. Imagine the joke. Ha 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 my sights. Thank you, Bradley. You're welcome, my friend. Proceed. The story involves a trio of teenagers named Timmy. Are these dinosaur teenagers? No, I don't think so. Timmy, Jamie, and Mick. On them out there, who enjoy watching their favorite TV show, which features anthropomorphic dinosaurs. Okay, and then what? They like watching dinosaurs. This it's a show about these guys that like to watch a show about dinosaurs. It's a movie about these. A guys. movie about these guys, right? It's, it's like we're gonna make these. Uh, this is a movie about three guys that like to watch How I Met Your Mother. That's all we know <laughs> about it. Wanting to watch it on a better screen, which is fair. <laughs> They're Timmy. still going with these guys' fandom of the show? No, but he just wants to see it. They just really want to watch the show, man. It's a good show. Have, the I, writing's like, solid. They get some jokes for the whole family. We're just so dinosaurs. big fans of HBO's uh, Game of Thrones series. We need a nicer, high-dynamic-range TV. Timmy, the youngest of the three, suggests that they try watching on his father's screen in his laboratory. Oh, no. <laughs> Oh no. The moment they turn it on, a vortex sucks the three into the TV screen and into their favorite show. A pa- <laughs> you get something you want to say? It's just dumb. Yeah, it is. <laughs> it's Pleasantville, <laughs> but dinosaurs. Is that what happens in Pleasantville? They go in the TV? Um, Tom McGuire's character is a big fan of it because of its old timey values, and his sister is just, that's dumb. They start arguing over the remote, they break it, and Donna shows up, is impressed by his knowledge of the show, and gives him a fancy remote that sucks them into the show. So it's, like, click. Only they're inside the show instead of just... But the remote doesn't... I mean, it's just the one function magic remote instead of the... Yeah, and they're stuck, and they're supposed to learn a lesson. But instead, they start changing the characters so they they go from black and white to being in color. Which causes this whole race conflict between the ones who are colored and the ones who are still black and white. Interesting. Yeah. Also, we w- I should point out I have not seen either one, but there is like that's an that's the new one. There was another one that I think was in the seventies. Not the exact same premise, but similar. So yeah, the, they sucked into the vortex into the show. Upon entering the new world, the trio crum- comes across a flightless dimorphodon named Fori, because he's a dimorphodon. Oh, that's stupid. The- <laughs> Anything like this has names like this. Fine. Except again, uh, dinosaurs, where the main character was Earl Sinclair and his family. Although reluctant at first to help them, his knowledge of Dinosaur City proves u- useful as he guides the three to Tar Town, where they join up with Rex and Tops. 
two dinosaur freedom fighters willing to ignite a revolution against the villain, Mr. Big, and his caveman henchmen, the Rockies. This is kind of racist against dinosaurs. A little bit. Like, they need... Other, oh, oh, yeah. You gotta need human help to, to come up with your freedom fighter, huh? You can't... They, they can't do it on their own, apparently. They're not good enough. They yeah. need us. I mean, they are in a show that was written presumably by people, so yes. Maybe it's a meta commentary on that plot I mean, line? they have... All but three of the characters in this movie are dinosaurs. And a pterosaur. I mean, that's not... Well, yeah, uh, but... Okay, okay, you're right. That's not a dinosaur. It's just a flying lizard thing from the same era. Yes. Let's be technical. But we could have just had without we could have just had the dinosaur show. I'm gonna I'm gonna look this up. I wanna see what this looks like. I need I need a visual for this. Dinosaur City. Adventures in. Uh, Adventures in Dinosaur City. Look at all I mean, these are pretty good. I don't I don't I've Those are decent. Yeah. I mean, it's not obviously not like the most expensive stuff, but yeah, these are these are okay animatronics. Why not just have a whole movie with dinosaurs in it? What would would that kill you? Because you need the kid appeal character. Otherwise, kids won't be able to identify with the movie, the product, and won't be able to enjoy it fully. I just Transformers. Wanna, <laughs> I do want to point out one of these people's you named off was a female, and I did not realize that until just now. I'm assuming it's Jamie. Yeah, I was gonna, I was gonna ask, but then I was like, you know what? This is a dinosaur movie, and it didn't really answer. It's just like three teens, Timmy, Jamie, and uh, Mike, and then J- Jimmy has, or Timmy has an idea that gets him stuck in Dinosaur City. The guy, one of these people, is not much. That of a is teen. really stressing the word teen there. Yeah, like maybe he just turned that thirteen. Dude, the dude on the right looks like he's <laughs> about like, twenty five. <laughs> yeah, she looks like she's seventeen, eighteen, and he's like twelve. <laughs> yes, so but movie teens, so you know, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. Is that it for that one, Brantley? That is it for uh, that. You don't you want to, you don't want to address the uh, the Rockies. Oh, I'm sorry. I, I go. Hit, Mr. Hit that Big, again. the villain, right? Yes, because and his caveman henchmen, the Rockies. Also, well, the humans are the good guys and the bad guys. The the cavemen, because those are different. That no, that's just dumb. Yeah, I'm just annoyed. It's more dumb. <laughs> I, I already is. I like the dumb train pulled out of the station. And it's this just, second, it was this is their favorite show. The dumb train left. Yes, it was like all aboard here. Yeah, and if I mean, if you didn't want to go to Dumbville, then you didn't get on the train, and I did not. So it's, <laughs> nothing is surprising me at this point. I mean, the fact the guy's called Mister Big, like that's probably his literal name in the movie. Yeah, and I don't care because it's just it's all dumb. As opposed to Rex and Tops, which I feel like in the universe those are like really racist nicknames. You think? I mean, I'm assuming I saw the picture. T uh, Rex was a Tyrannosaur and Tops was a Ceratopsid. Or maybe they're just really uncreative. We need code names. So we call me Rex and I call him Tops. <laughs> um, what? N- what's our name? Harry. Because they have hair. Fair enough. Well, I'm going to read the next one and it is Future Kick. What? Huh? <laughs> In the mid 21st century, Earth. Ooh, far future. <laughs> has become a hellhole. <clears throat> I've never thought about the future, right? <clears throat> well, the past uh, it has been. I've never thought about the like the exact, like the literal meaning of the word hellhole. I mean, I think well, most people probably don't either. They're just sort of like, oh, this is a hellhole. They're like, Oh, now I'm just imagining like literal holes that go down to hell and sort of how unnerving that would be. Those are called hell mouths, and there are several places on Earth that are believed to be those. Most of them are like open mouth volcanoes. Right, uh, but I'm saying like let's assume of, of a universe in which hell is a literal There's place, just, like the center of the Earth. Pits they go to where? Yeah, and it's just like you can just walk up to the pit and hear the screaming, and if you fall in, that's you just you're in hell. There is a cave in South America that the Mayans, Aztecs, Incans, one of them. Literally believe that it was the whole the portal to hell, and because it roughly matched up the description of the travel of the path path blah, path you'd have to walk to get there. You know, demons that would strike at you from the darkness, and there's like a lot of very poisonous, deadly spiders in there, and things like that. Yeah, yeah. And going in there is like fifty fifty. You're gonna die. So like, yeah, everybody goes in there. They don't come back clearly because they went to hell. 
stay away. So in in the 21st century, Earth has become a hellhole teeming, teeming with poverty and crime. The <clears> rich <throat> have fled to the moon. Elysium. Where they establish a safe haven. Yeah, it is actually... Did they did they rip off Elysium from Future Kick? I think it's just a fairly not common but just understandable idea to reach. I just love the idea that that uh, I forget the name of Neil Blomkamp saw Future Kick and he's like, nobody saw this. I can totally rip this plot off. <laughs> uh, but it does get dumber. Howard Morgan, a virtual reality game designer. Returns to Earth to sell his latest creation. As opposed to what? Board game designer? That's her thing. He could have been that. Eh, not, mm. Or he, I mean, virtual reality, I mean, at this it point, takes different... Board games have uh, been reduced to doggy do. There are also, there, listen, there are many advancements in the tabletop gaming world, Brantley. Lots of I cool things. board games, not tabletop gaming. No, I'm not even saying that. Like, there are cool, like the Contagion game, I believe, is supposed to be super popular. They're all expensive, though. Like I'm looking at, I've looked at all these popular board games that are, I've heard of, and it's like, oh, you want to play Settlers of Catan? That'll be fifty dollars. I have that game. That game is rad. But I'm not gonna pay fifty dollars for it. And then you got to get the expansions if you want it to be really good. And each of those is like twenty bucks, and it's like fifteen. Yeah. So uh, board gaming is still a big thing, uh, but he's not doing that. Or, no. or maybe he makes board games in virtual reality. Like tabletop he has simulator. The tabletop, tabletop simulator. <laughs> he came up with. He's still working on it. <laughs> <laughs> I really get, and we're almost there. We got to iron on a few things, guys. It's almost ready. Uh, I have to go back to Earth to sell it. Nobody up here wants it. <laughs> Everybody's up here like, we don't even want to think about tables. <laughs> Too rich for that. But while enjoying a night out on the town, he is brutally murdered. At, on Earth, which is a hellhole? What is the night out on the town there? It's like, oh, look at those drunks. They're fighting in the alley there. I'm so rich. I think that, you know, you go to the, uh, he probably... Well, there are rich things and poor things. Like, you go to the, the lower class neighborhoods and it's, like, easier to find prostitutes and there people are selling drugs on the street corner and, like, you know, it's it's pretty easy to uh, find yourself some vice to indulge Fair in. Fair enough. So that's, this is sort of the analog of that. Okay. His widow, Nancy, decides to follow his trail. To, 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 to dot death? I think she's looking for, like, who killed him, I think is what the implication is here. But then also, it does sort of like, I'm going to go do that, too. I'm going to retrace his steps. They wound up leading him to dying. Yeah, best way to find him. I, how, He's <laughs> dead. <laughs> I'm going to find out how. I just We realized. had the stab wounds. <laughs> I think she just well, really the wants to get The guy admitted to it. She just wants to get drugs, but she's like, now I'm following where my husband went. Only, only motivation. Like, we literally have every evidence you could have. This I is just, the mid 21st century. There's, look, I got to see it with my own on every eyes. corner. <laughs> I, I just want to point out that we are in the mid 21st century, which it still qualifies even now, I would say, we as a relatively far off future in the movie. In okay, the movie. I was going to say, we're not now there. We're the it's, beginning of it. And the, the two people in this movie we have had names so far are Howard and Nancy. Yeah. Which uh, are not. Not names that I would associate with something called Future Kick. I don't understand this idea of future names. Right now, we have names that have been in use for hundreds, if not thousands of years, and whenever someone comes up with something new, they're like, that's dumb. You name your kid Northwest? You're an idiot. Actually, that one sounds... I mean, if, if you're going to come up with your own name, that one's okay. Okay, fair enough. But... <laughs> like, it's not like the best thing ever. I, I will make fun of it a little bit. Oh, what did Michael Jackson name his kids? One of them's Blanket. And things like that. With the help of Walker... The last of the Cyberons, a race of law enforcement androids built by a corrupt corporation to enforce their laws, only to turn on them. Now working as a bounty hunter. To be fair, a long sentence. He was a good improvement on that Ed Two Hundred Nine. Yeah, this is well. So this is the, the reverse of that. So they, these Cyberons, were apparently a successful operation for a while. And then there was an uprising like th this and all Terminator happened off screen. <laughs> like these guys are like, you guys are a corrupt law enforcement uh, uh, corporation. We're not going to enforce your laws. We bring justice. And it's sort of like the reverse of uh, I'm trying to uh, what's the guy's name? Ultron. Like the guy who builds Ultron is the bad guy. And Ultron's like, you guys suck. I'm so, going to take over. Age of Ultron. Is that is Tony is totally the bad guy in that movie. Uh, but in the text, I'm saying like people would see him them as the bad guy. He's also he's not a I corporation. Mean Scarlet Witch's motivation. Fair enough. <laughs> uh, 
There are a, a lot. And that in the following movie. <laughs> I'm also really, it's just annoying to me that this is all happening off a screen. screen and it's like, and meanwhile, he's just like, yes, procedural. I was a member of a law enforcement android unit built by a corrupt corporation to enforce their laws, but we turned on them. And really now working as a bounty hunter. Me to give my entire backstory whenever I meet new people. It's really <laughs> exhausting. I don't get a lot done throughout the day. Nancy discovers that her husband was killed because he had obtained information implicating his employer in an illegal organ theft ring that steals organs from murder victims. And his plan when he had that was, gonna go party. Gonna party down. Could take this to the cops. Nope. Party. Well, okay. I'm trying, I'm trying. So yeah, I'm going back and reading over this. He, he is enjoying a night on the town while he's brutally yeah. murdered. No. <laughs> I, I like the boss is like, man, he's going straight to the cops. I'm dude. <laughs> he's partying right now. Well, he just ordered really, three hookers. <laughs> really? On the company card? What? <laughs> Go kill the guy. They take credit Problem card solved. Now? Jeez. It's the mid 21st century. They probably have like things hooked into their arm. Probably yes, <laughs> a little <laughs> swipe thing between their boobs. Yeah, <laughs> it's chip. So click and goes and insert something else, honey. No, nope, too far. Calm it down. <sighs> Two on the nose. Yeah, I, I think that this is something like that. This guy is working up just to make Nancy feel good about the fact that his her husband died in the arms of like three hookers <laughs> covered in <laughs> cocaine. Um. <laughs> It's like, yeah, no, there's, there's totally a organ theft ring. I just get this image of he's telling his buddy while she's off, like, sleeping, and he's just, like, talking to a friend at a bar. He goes, yeah, I told her that it's this big conspiracy, but they were just hookers and cocaine. It was, like, some horrible Christmas display. We just, that's just the future now, so we take people's organs when they get killed, because that's, like, it's a good like, idea. He's an organ donor. That's what they're called. <laughs> it's unfortunate how they die, but still. Like, it doesn't say that they're having people murdered for the organs. They're murder victims. It's like, organ donor? Yeah, this is not that insidious. Like, people are already being killed, and they're like, they didn't check This is like donor. her not being able to deal with the loss of her husband and inventing this conspiracy, and everybody's just like, not really, but we'll play along. Yeah, this actually ties in with that theory you had earlier. <laughs> As the pair attempt to unravel the conspiracy, and I'm putting air quotes around conspiracy, <laughs> not in the, uh, in the actual quote. The organ theft ring's psychotic assassin and his android sidekick attempt to silence them. I mean, do they? So, they, he's not like he's not in charge of it. They the organ theft ring just employs a psychotic assassin, I and mean, he has an android yeah. side, sidekick. She's employing a bounty hunter. Apparently, that's just a career you can have. I mean, that's fine. I guess it it's, it seems unlikely though that they just have an assassin. I don't know. I mean, I mean, they are already psychotic. I was just my initial thought reading that was like, oh yeah, the psychotic like he's probably in charge, but no. He just works for them. I mean, if he's in charge, he's not going to be able to be out there killing people, and he probably really enjoys that. But he has... And this way he gets paid without having to, you know, do paperwork. Do you think in the future where there are robots that can kill people, that, like, murderers... Like, are psychopaths... Is that a way that psychopaths enjoy murdering people? I always thought that you would sort of want to get in there close and personal, but now we Depends we're, on the individual, because some people can enjoy the power of being able to kill them for where they are on the planet. Kim Jong-un? I don't... I All the Kims! You, I, I, Crazy You Korean can Kims. almost put any world leader in the class of serial killer, because almost every world leader that has any power at all ends up having to make decisions that end up getting people killed. Sweden! And Canada. Are you saying no, they don't there. do it? I mean, even Canada sent troops over to like the war on <laughs> Afghanistan and stuff. So uh, Sweden requires their people to be trained in firearms. Right, right. And uh, up until I think like five, six years ago, they were required to have an assault rifle in their home. Yeah. And so in World War II, uh, or no, some war, not World War II, but somebody asked, what if we invade with uh, 5,000 people? Fire to- and or they only had like half that number. Fire twice and go home. <laughs> Okay, not miss them, the Swedes. They're crazy and scary. That's why Sweden's awesome. And that's our episode today. Uh, I, 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 I kind of feel let down by Future Kick, I will say. It's got a fun title. It has a great title, and I like all these android things, but I was really expecting like karate slash futuristic martial arts stuff to happen. Watch the uh, Cell Saga of Dragon Ball Z, or the Android Saga, technically. Okay. 
Well, that would be that would be interesting. I because there's so much cool stuff that you could do, like using existing martial arts, but then like employing things that have joints that move in different directions and stuff. Yeah, you could totally go cool with that. But that's not this movie. For or we can even tell. just have like enhanced strength to excuse them like punching people through walls. <laughs> yes, or you could just have people punch through walls and have fun with it. I mean, it's you don't want to play logic in these fun, stupid movies. We don't. We Enough. don't, Brentley. That's it for this week. Thanks, everybody, so much for listening. Uh, if you're not already, you should head over to Patreon.com and check out uh, becoming a patron over there. You get access to the awesome exclusive episode uh, that we put up there just for our patrons. Uh, so thanks for checking that out, and we'll see you guys next week with another episode of Too Weird Didn't Watch. Bye, guys. Bye.